pleased to be here. Uh, Lando is a great venue. I think it's one of the best venues for a ball game anywhere in the country. Our kids have really enjoyed themselves here. I think there's a lot to do. Uh, they really enjoyed the weather and then the, the surroundings and the parks and all the things that went on. But the thing I've been very pleased with too, they, when it was time to do the things and have fun, they've done that. But it was been time to work and practice. We've had very good practice. We've been very pleased with our practices. And some of y'all saw them. I mean, enthusiasm, the effort. Uh, practice pretty very well, in my opinion, from what we've been doing. And uh, it's exciting to be here. Looking forward to a great matchup. They're named one of the traditional powers in college football. And uh, it's a great uh, venue for Florida State. And uh, they're named to be here. And uh, we're looking forward. We've got a heck of a challenge tomorrow. And uh, we're looking forward to it. We're going to have to play an A game, that's for sure. And uh, you know, we're anxious to see how some of these young guys take to take this environment, which I think will be very well. Where are you with your offensive line? Are you young? Are you old? Are you a combination of the two? No, we're, we'll be young in this game. They've got a chance. We'll probably start four freshmen uh, with some of those other guys. We've had two injuries since the Florida game. Uh, Garrett Faircloth had a hip that uh, would call, would require surgery. He could play if he had to, but he's got a hip that requires surgery. Stork has a finger that he almost he got infected, almost lost it, uh, got infected very badly uh, after the game. Uh, but he can play, and uh, it's harder at center to play guard and do some things, can go back in the center if he has to. But uh, just one of those things, they had those two injuries plus the others. We already had two freshmen starting anyway. But the young guys have been very well. They're going to be great players. I'm, we're very excited about it. Bobby's been playing. Austin Barron's actually started two games this year. He played at Boston College and he played at Miami. Uh, and Trey Jackson's going would have played a bunch this year. He had a knee injury at the beginning of the year. He's going to be one of the points over with. He's going to be one of the great linemen I think ever play here. I think he's got a chance to be a very special guy. Jose Matias has got his, you know, both of them are 325 pounds, big, athletic and do a great job, and we go good on good every day, and it's made a difference blocking our guys, too. So those guys have all been, I've been very pleased with the way they prepared. Coach, both you and Notre Dame are, are, are trying to get back, uh, get back to where you once were. How close is Florida State, and, and what's it take to get back there besides recruiting? Well, I think recruiting, I think a little bit of luck and staying healthy. You know, I think you have to do it. And I think you have to, you have to understand the culture. And, you know, you went through 10 years of uh, not really being on top. And you have to, you know, it's not three years or two years. It's been 10. And you have to understand that mentality. And, you, and that's something we have to change and get back to where we're used to winning 10, 11 games. And I think we do. I think our players, the thing I said all year, I've been very pleased with our players and how they practice their effort, their tenacity, win, lose. They, you know, have learned to break out the distractions they go along with being a good team, and I was very pleased with the, the young group of guys, how they stay together and really practice well, and I think we'll be there. I really do. I mean, and, and then you got to have the, the, the football guys got to be on your side. you got to stay healthy. Every now and then the ball's got to bounce right. But you got to make that luck. You have to do it yourself, and uh, I think we will. I, I'm very pleased with where we're going in the direction. I think we're recruiting well. We've got another great class, in my opinion, and uh, I think we'll have a great year next year. Hope we'll have a great game tomorrow. Coach, now that most of the preparation is done, how much easier do you think it was to sell your team on this particular game because of the matchup, because it is Notre Dame? You know, some of our guys are looking forward to coming here anyway. I mean, they like coming to Orlando, and, and, and you say this, the one thing about this where the majority of our players are from Florida, this is one of the bowl games that all their families can come to. You say, if you go, you leave the state of Florida, it's hard for their families to ever travel you know, to Atlanta, to a BCS game, or to somewhere, you know, if you're in the Orange Bowl, it's one thing, but... You know, the, the, the location of being in Orlando, our kids are very excited for because their fans, it's very easy for their families to get here. And financially, it's not a burden on them to get here as much as it would be if it's, it's somewhere across the country. So that's one of the reasons we like it. Uh, we like playing in the warm weather. And, uh, but from that standpoint, they were excited about coming to Orlando. They know Orlando's a great city. I mean, playing Notre Dame also helps. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they're a great team. And, but I, they were excited about to come to Orlando in general. If you had to sort of stand in front of a chalkboard and prioritize what your guys need to do to win tomorrow or how they need to play to win tomorrow, what's at the top of that list? I think always turnovers. The turnovers affect the game more than anything. And I think that's the one thing uh, on offense we have done very well this year. I said we had two games in which we've had multiple turnovers on offense. That was Wake and Oklahoma. Other than that, we've had one or less turnovers on offense in every game. So taking care of the ball was very crucial. I think penalties and big plays. We created a lot of big plays, especially the first 19 games of the year. We didn't give up big plays. 
and then creating turnovers on defense. You know, early in the year we struggled because we didn't get turnovers. Then later, the second half of the year, we created. But we went through, I think, about five or six games at the beginning of the year and didn't have a turnover, maybe one. Then the second half of the year, we were creating turnovers, and that was getting field position, that was getting points, and we were getting big plays, we weren't giving up big plays. I think those two things, and then I think penalties, I think those three things affect the game every year. Turnovers, you know, uh, penalties, big plays. I think those three affect the game tremendously every time you ever play whatever it is. And I think in the assignment three up front on the offensive line with those young guys, just making sure you got a hat for a hat and understand what your assignment is and be able to do it. To give, give our skill guys a chance to execute. Jimbo, EJ started one year, but yet he's played in so many big games. This is third bowl, two championship games, uh, or the, the uh, ACC championship game. What does that mean for someone who's going into next year and having all that experience plus one year? Well, I think hopefully if he can stay healthy, I think it, it would be tremendous because it gives the team, not only him a comfort zone, it gives your team a comfort zone that who's in charge, who's saying the things to him on the field. <clears throat> they know he's been there and he's, he's been successful in those venues. And I think it, it'll, it'll be a tremendous how he, you know, he, he goes into the offseason, which he always does. So EJ's the guy, I said this yesterday, you guys were talking, I said he's like, uh, he's out there with all these young guys, the way he's managed those guys this year. In other words, helping them on the field, the young guys on the all freshmen, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this, help me here. But then at the same time, and then some of their lack of execution at times, his too. I mean, he hasn't always played great, but sometimes, you know, they're not always knowing what to do, so they don't play as well. Sometimes frustration can come from you because you have to adapt. He doesn't. He doesn't let that things bother him. And I think that the leadership he has and the command he has of our team and the respect he has from our team, I think, is tremendous. And they know going into big games, they can look to him and lean on him, and, and he'll be there for them. Coach, over here, mm -hmm. can you share your impressions of Notre Dame's defensive front? Very extremely well coached, do a great job with their hands, uh, make you block them. What I'm saying is they shed blocks very well. I mean, Nix is a huge nose guard. Aaron Lynch has become tremendous as a, as a young freshman playing at the defensive end position. I mean, he can rush the pass, he causes problems. The backer, five, does a great job of filling, and they're physical, uh, they're big. And, but that, well, the thing you watch them up front and that front seven, they use their hands very well. Their technique is very, very good. And they not only engage in you to stop you, but then they can disengage and separate and make plays, which in today's time in defense, that, that has kind of gone away. We all become one-gap defenses now, and everybody kind of, well, I got my gap. The old two-gap stuff of using hands and disengaging and throwing people, there's not a lot of those guys around anymore, and they do a very good job of that. You can tell they're very well coached up front. Coach, guys our age know what Notre Dame football uh, is all about. You recruit against them, I'm sure, nationally. Mm -hmm. Do recruits today know what Notre Dame football is? I, I think, yeah, I think they do in, in the right venues, I think. But I think other programs have grown so much. And I think the ability now, you, you got to remember back in the day when Notre Dame, I, we was talking about this the other day, and I, I remember Notre Dame football as a kid growing up. I grew up in West Virginia. But there was only two teams that had a TV show. Notre Dame with Lindsey Nelson and Paul Horning sometimes on Sunday morning. I, I mean, I go back to watching Ross Brown and Willie Fry and Weston and Ken McAfee. And the, I mean, I remember, I remember the great games I had with Alabama and the two Orange Bowls, and the Orange Bowl and Sugar Bowl, 13, 11, 24, 23. I remember those games as a kid. But you had to because they were a national team you saw. And then Penn State was the other one. George, uh, Joe's brother ran the, the TV show for them. So nationally, I think it gives them a huge advantage across the country back in those days nationally to things. Now, I think with the way our media has changed now and the evolution of TV and, you know, you can get just as much coverage from your hometown teams, the Florida teams, the Florida States, the Georgias, the I mean, all those teams now, I, I think, has helped keep kids in the South or wherever their home teams are across the country. But Notre Dame is still Notre Dame. they still got great national field and got great academic tradition. And, you know, as they, they still draw their players and get great players. But I think they had a huge advantage back then. I really do. I was there two teams. That's the only one that I looked for on Sunday. See everyone, what they played like. Jimbo, over here. Yes. Any, any update on Bert Reed? Is he going to try to give it a go? Yeah, he went. He practiced yesterday. He's practiced the last three days. It, it went good, and uh, he, he should play in the game. He should play in the game, yes. Well, he would play in the game. So he should. He would play in the game. Uh, how much did the future factor into starting those four guys in the offensive line? Not a lot. I mean, we got injuries. I mean, Fairclough has got to have surgery as soon as the year's over, and uh, Stork's got that finger. That he, I, mean, I mean, he can practice for six days. I mean, they, they're talking about having to amputate. 